After Effects offers so many ways to motion track your footage. One of them is the perspective corner pin method. But is it still useful these days, especially when we have the Mocha AE plugin included for free? Well, let's put it to the test and find out. Now the purpose of this series is to cover each and every way to use motion tracking in After Effects, as well as offer some workaround to solve errors and problems. So make sure to watch the entire playlist to get the full picture. Now this tutorial, as you already know, is all about perspective corner pin tracker. And to showcase this, I'll use this composition that you may have seen in a previous tutorial where I demonstrated what to do when tracking fails. There's a link in the description in case you want to revisit it. Anyway, I want to draw your attention to the green frame here and notice that it moves with the shakiness of the shelf. This means that we can't place an image on top of it without tracking because it won't look correct. So to sell the illusion, we need to track the perspective of the green frame and then attach the data to the video layer of this time-lapse flower that I got from Adobe Stock. So this is our problem and here is at least one way to solve it. All right, so I'll go to the beginning and then I'll select the hand lamp layer, open it up, and you can see that I already have under motion trackers, the bulb tracker. I can double click on the layer to open it in the layer panel. And this is also going to load this tracker. Notice if I'll open it, we only have one point tracker. So in this case, I want to add a completely new tracker and select a different track type. So I'll click again on track motion and this is going to add another tracker. I'll start by clicking on the options, which is going to give me the ability to name the tracker. So I'll name it frame and then I'll click OK. And for the track type, instead of transform, I'll choose the perspective corner pin. Now notice that one of the methods here is the parallel corner pin. And this tracks skew and rotation, but not perspective. But its next door neighbor, actually one floor underneath, is the perspective corner pin which adds perspective, and this is usually a safer bet. So let's put it to action and see how useful it is. I'll select it, and After Effects is going to create four trackers because it expects four corners. I'll press the period key to zoom into the frame, and then I'll click to select the first tracker point and move it to the edge of the frame. I'll do the same for the second one, and then if I'll try to move the third one, probably After Effects is not going to let me reach the edge. And this is because I need to actually move the fourth one. So the perspective is going to work here. So if this happens to you, just move the other tracker and then return to the previous one and make sure it is exactly on top of what you want to track. So in essence, what we have here are four simple position trackers, which are connected to create a perspective corner shift. Let's click on Analyze Forward and let After Effects track everything at the same time. Now, this is very important. In this case, we don't want to attach the data to a null object. We actually need to make sure that we are clicking on Edit Target and selecting the clip that we want the motion to be applied to. In my case, I only have one clip, so it's going to select it automatically. Then I'll click Apply and we can see that we have a match. So if I'll drag the timeline, we can see that the corner pin effect was applied to the selected target. And we also have keyframes for the position of the layer. And this means that we can enable motion blur and it's going to look correct if there's motion in the area that we've tracked. However, the result doesn't really look convincing. And this is because we need to key out the green color of this frame as well as change the layer orders. So the lens flare effect is going to be on top of all the other layers. All right, so a bit of compositing work, but it's super simple and very fun. I'll start by closing the things that I don't need. Actually, I'm going to close the entire layer over here. Let's again, make it visible. So we'll see the problem. The lens flare is not affecting this frame. So to fix this, I'm going to close the motion trackers and then I'll go to the lens flare effect 
And first, let's copy it to the clipboard by pressing Command C here on the Mac, Control C on Windows, of course. I'm also going to open up the lens flare just to show you that the keyframes starts from here. So I'll make sure my playhead is aligned to the first keyframe, eight frames in my case. And then I'll press Command Y to create a new solid. I'll name it lens flare, making sure it is set to the comp size and the color is black. Next, I'll click OK, and then paste the effect by pressing Command V, and just to verify that everything is synced, I'll also press U to see the keyframes, and I can see both of them are starting at the same time. So now, I'll change the blending mode of this black solid to screen, and I'll switch off the visibility of the original lens flare effect, and of course, I can trill up everything. Then I'll grab the lens flare layer, and place it above all the other layers and press spacebar to preview the intermediate result. All right, so this is being sorted. Now let's make the entire thing looks more believable. I'll start by grabbing the flower time-lapse video and placing it underneath the hand lamp video. I'm also going to close the things that I don't need to use. And then I'll select this layer and I want to key out the green. Now you may be tempted to go under effect King and select the key light effect, but I'm here to tell you that this is not going to work. Let's see what happens. I'm going to click over here and we can see that with the green, we are also losing a lot of other details. We can actually see the compression in the video. If I switch from final result to intermediate result, it's going to make it a little bit better, but again, this is probably not the best tool for the job. So I'll thank key light, I'll delete it, and instead I'll return back to the keying category and I'm going to use the color range command, which is going to do the same thing, but this one is working with the LAB color space. So it will yield better result. I'll take the eyedropper, click somewhere over here, and maybe also click a few more times just to make sure that I'm adding all the colors. I'll zoom in by pressing the period key just to show you that we are getting rid of all the green but we still have all the green spill at the edge of this frame. And to remedy this, I'll return back to the effect menu. Once again, visit the keying category, but this time I'll choose the first one, advanced spill suppressor. I'll switch from standard to ultra, and this is going to allow you to define your own green color. So to make sure we are sampling the correct one, let's just switch off both of these effects and then use the eyedropper and click over here. And then we can re-enable the color range as well as the advanced spill suppressor. And that's it, the deed is done. We can zoom back to fit the viewer and we can preview the final result. So to conclude, I think this method of tracking is still useful, especially in those simple scenarios like the one that we just saw. Obviously, it can't compete with Mocha because the feature points must be visible at all time. However, it's still useful and super easy to set up. So I will give it a thumbs up and also like this video. Why not? It's free. Now more tracking tutorials are coming your way, so make sure to follow and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.